Today we'll be having a chat about what it means to feel lost in life and how we can start creating a life that feels more intentional. So why do we feel lost in the first place? Sometimes we don't know what we truly want in life and sometimes we don't believe we can live the life we want. Maybe you're feeling stuck and like time is passing and working against you without you actually living the life that you truly desire. As tough as times like this can be, it's a great opportunity to slow down and reflect and think about what kind of life you want to be living. Do you like who you are? Do you feel the life you live is truly yours? Think of your life like a movie. Do you feel that you're the main character in your life or are you just a side character going along with the plot? So think, if your life were a movie, what would it be about? Maybe you can try journaling on this and imagine what the storyline is. What kind of ending do you want your movie to have? Also think about your character. How does your character act, look, dress? All these things make up how you imagine your life would be if you could fully create it how you want to. A quote I really like is, the purpose of life isn't to love yourself, but to love being yourself. And I think that fits really well. It can be so hard and so much pressure to like everything about yourself. And you don't need to. You're not going to be perfect. You're human. But you can like the life that you're living. And a big part of that is making sure that your life reflects who you actually are. So if you're feeling lost and you need a bit of direction, here's some advice I wish I could have given myself. The first part is learn to take care of yourself. This is so important and I can't stress it enough. A great way to think about this is to imagine your body like a plant. A lot of problems in life come down to people not taking care of themselves properly. So try to take care of the basics, drink enough water, take your vitamins, get enough movement, get enough sunlight. These things will make such a big difference. You probably noticed yourself if you're just indoors, you don't do anything for days, you're gonna feel awful. And I think a lot of problems in the mind start in the body. Try to see your body as separate from you and take care of it the best you can. Next is your mind. Something that I've realized is that you are not your thoughts. You are the one hearing your thoughts. And they're not set in stone either. Most of our thoughts are habits that just run in loops over and over because we get used to thinking a certain way about situations. And that becomes the voice in our head. You know, your inner voice can either be your greatest supporter or your biggest critic. And I think for most people, your inner voice can be quite critical and quite harsh. And I'm sure a lot of people speak to themselves in ways that they'd never speak to others, especially loved ones. But the good thing is, while you listen to your inner voice a lot, you can also change it. And you can start to interrupt a lot of those thought loops by replacing your thoughts with more positive ones. And after a while, that'll become a habit too. So. Next time you fail at something or you feel bad, instead of putting yourself down for it, your thoughts will automatically start running and they'll be positive, they'll pick you up. But for your mind to reflect this, you need to teach it how you want your thoughts to speak to you. So first, try to become more aware of the thoughts that are running in your head. A great question to ask yourself is how many of your thoughts in a day are positive and how many are negative? That's where you want to start. So. Whenever you notice yourself speaking to yourself in a way that you don't like, that isn't positive or helpful, that puts you down, try to change that. You start talking to yourself the way you would to your best friend or a child. You're going to be kind and supportive, accepting, you'll show love. And you can train your inner voice to become that over time. Think how much easier life would be if your inner voice in your head were always positive, lifting you up and helping you when you feel down instead of making you feel worse. I believe so many of us, what we're really afraid of with failure and with not doing our best, with letting ourselves down is actually facing that inner voice and losing a bit of trust in ourselves, losing our sense of self-worth. That inner voice we have can be really damaging if we let it. So instead, turn it around. It's the one thing that's completely in your control and you can change for the better. So to wrap up this first point, realize you are not your body or your thoughts. Instead, you have a responsibility to take care of them. So once you're healthy, you're taking care of yourself, you feel more like a happy child, then it's time to look outwards. The second step is visualize your dream life. A thought experiment I really love is if you have a magic wand and you have three wishes that can be anything, what would they be? 
Write that down, really have a think about it, because that will help give you direction. Also think, what does your ideal self look like? This is your self-concept, so you'll have an idea of who you are in your head, and most of the time, you act out based on that idea of yourself. So really, you're acting out an image that you already have set in your mind. And this is where most people fail at making changes in their life. For example, if you're a smoker, and you've been a smoker your whole life, and you try to quit. And it's the language you use with yourself as well. If you say, oh, I'm trying to quit smoking, it's gonna be a lot harder than switching that to, I don't smoke, I'm not a smoker. This applies to all things. If we try to set New Year's resolutions and we keep getting in our own way, it's normally because the goals we have don't align with our self-concept, our idea of who we are. And that's what you need to change first. A great practice is visualize what your ideal self looks like. And with that, I mean how they act, how they show up, what they believe, what they do, all the things that make it up. You can write it out like a character. This is who your starring role is in your movie. Imagine the person that you really want to be, the person you'd be proud to be, the person who would live your dream life, and think about all parts that make that up. That's your ideal self. If you start acting like your ideal self, you're going to become that. One thing I like to do is, for example, if I decide I want to be more positive of a person, I will think, well, what does a positive person do? I'll think of three things. For example, a positive person speaks kindly to themselves. They are kind to others. They smile a lot. Um, they practice gratitude. They see the good in situations. Those are three things that a positive person does. So if I start doing these things, then I become a more positive person. So figure out who your ideal self is and start acting like that. Start showing up as them. So the third and last step in this is identify your limiting beliefs, fears, and insecurities that are holding you back from living that life. If you realize that you set the same goal over and over and you keep getting in your own way, then it's because you have some limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck. And the only way to change that is by first identifying them. Limiting beliefs are the kind of thoughts that everyone has that go, oh, I could never do this, I am not smart enough, I'm lazy, and these are thought loops that keep us stuck in our own ways. Limiting beliefs are not necessarily bad. They come into being as a way to protect ourselves because we always want to keep ourselves safe. And if we know that a situation is safe or comfortable, we're going to do everything to make sure we stay in that. You can think these beliefs, but you also need to recognize when they're holding you back from living the life you truly want. Think of your mind as a house that you live in. Most people, they just kind of live there. They don't realize that they're the ones who can change things in the house. They can redecorate, they can get rid of old furniture. Most people just live there and they don't spend much time on actually building their mind to be a place that they actually enjoy being in. You need to become intentional about what's in your house and what kind of things you want to see in there, how you want it to feel, how you want it to look, and also what you don't want to have in there. Shadow work is a great way of dealing with limiting beliefs. It's the process of becoming aware of these underlying fears, doubts, insecurities that keep you stuck in life and pulling them apart. You need to unravel them to realize the thinking behind it or the lack of thinking behind it and that's when you can start to change these thoughts. For example, the thought, I am a lazy person, so I can't do this and that. You need to think, well, what makes me believe that I'm a lazy person? Is it this and that past experience that I'm basing this off of? What happened then? What examples are there where I've been a productive or successful person? You know, what speaks for or against this belief? And there's so many ways you can start to pull this apart I really love to use journaling and shadow work prompts for this, but the whole idea is to realize when you have a thought that's holding you back that doesn't quite make sense and it might not reflect what you actually want to believe anymore and start picking it apart. Start asking yourself questions. Try to understand where this comes from and what it's trying to do. Once you understand your limiting beliefs, you can start to change them. 
you can take that same thought and go, okay, well, I am not a lazy person. There have been times where I have felt lazy because of this and that, but here are examples where I've been really productive, where I've been great at something, and that's what you want to hold on to. You can use affirmations and start changing your self-concept in this way. For example, say, I am capable and smart, and here are some things I've achieved that make me feel great. And you can start working on this, and by really leaning into creating a new thought that helps you that's more positive, you can start to change out the old ones that keep you stuck. There are so many more tools and books you can read on ways to do this. And let me know if you want me to share some of my shadow work prompts that can really help you start to unravel your thoughts, understand where they're coming from, and also start to change them. The biggest thing that made me realize that I want to change my life is realizing that I am not my mind, even when we feel like it. I know for me, I felt for so long that all of my thoughts are me, and no matter what I do in my life, I'm going to take that with me, and I'm always going to feel and think a certain way. But that's not true. In fact, that's the one thing that's completely in your control to change, and you should if it's not helping you. I'll be talking more about how to do this in my next videos. Thanks for watching, I hope you like this video, and subscribe for more. Bye!